Hey guys, so on this job we're going to be stamping, pouring and stamping a back patio slab that's right underneath this deck. Now it was a little bit challenging in a couple ways. For the pour, you can see the access we had on the truck was, was right on the side of the house. So his chutes wouldn't even reach really with the patio where we needed the concrete. So we had to use our little chute to kind of angle in there and redirect the concrete to get it to where we needed it. So that was one little challenge. Some other challenges on this job were, even though it was really small, you know, whenever you're stamping concrete and see we're inside uh, a little area here, we got three walls on three sides and then we got these two posts in the front. That always makes it a little challenging. So you'll see how we dealt with that here a little later in the video when we start stamping this. Now we do have color in the concrete, even though it looks gray. Uh, we added a color, a gray color to the concrete. It was called gull gray. What that does is it keeps, the gull gray helps keep the concrete looking more grayish, kind of like it looks right now as we pour it, versus after it cures out, if you look at the concrete walls there to the left of me, I'm the guy holding the chute, those kind of look like really, really light gray or almost like a white color, and that's typically what regular concrete cures out to look like is that. So if you want to keep it a little darker, you got to add some gray to it. Which seems kind of weird, but that's just how it works. We tip, we use this gold gray color a lot. Now here's Eric showing up, Luke showing up. They were on a different job pouring, you know, a few miles away. And they got done pouring their job. They had a little time in between finishing. So they decided to just run over here and see if we needed any help getting this thing poured. This wasn't a lot of yardage. I believe it was like two yards, two and a half yards of concrete. You know, we use, we're pouring it four inches thick. We got that mat of uh, fiberglass rebar in there. We got 4,000 PSI concrete. We use we do use air entrainment in our exterior finishes here in Maine because we get a lot of freeze and thaw cycles. So when we pour concrete outside, the batch man, when he batches the concrete, adds the air entrainment in it. And that just helps protect it against freezing and thawing a little bit better. It's basically like all these tiny microscopic air bubbles in the concrete. You can't really see them, but they allow water to get in the concrete and freeze and expand without popping the concrete and ruining the surface. If you live in the south and you don't really have freeze and thaw cycles, you don't really have to worry about air entrainment. You can just pour non-air concrete. This is my little chute cleaning trick. <laughs> I run up the chute, clean it all out with my boots, scrape it down. That way when the guy, the concrete driver, pulls ahead to wash his chutes, he doesn't have a lot of excess concrete in his chute and leaves a, a messy pile of concrete on the side of the driveway or something like that. And we're going to finish up screeding this. That, that's actually Luke there on the left. He was screeding it. get this thing nice and level it it slopes a little bit out from the back of that wall out towards the front it slopes about an inch not that they really gonna get much water in there because that's that deck has a roof on it so it's screened in porch upstairs but we don't want any uh, puddles sitting on this from a hard rain that might get on it so we, we sloped it a little bit now this is about probably 45 minutes after the pour Concrete's starting to firm up pretty good. We're going to put an edge on it. Uh, we got to get on it and mag float it out. Typically, that's how we, we do most of our stamp concrete is we'll get on it either by hand like this or we'll, we'll reach out with our funny float and if we can reach it all by hand and do it that way. But this one, you know, with the three walls we're dealing with and those two posts, we just decided to get on it with our skids. That's me out there with the skids and just mag float the surface out, kind of smooth it out. Move all the bull float lines, any little imperfections, and just get it ready for stamping. It's fairly firm right now. I mean, I could probably, if I were to push my fingers in the surface, I could probably push my fingers down in a quarter inch or so, maybe maybe three-eighths, but more likely a quarter. That's how firm it is without without going any deeper. Luke's prepping the stamps for the... For the stamping, he's using a liquid release. We also, we tint our liquid release. So we'll take a little bit of our powdered release, which is charcoal in this case, and we'll fill that sprayer up with a liquid release, about two, two and a half gallons, and we'll put about a cup of that 
powdered release in it mix it all up real good and it comes out it comes out tinted like that so it just helps add that antiquing two-tone kind of color effect to the concrete when you're all done and it's ready to stamp it was pretty warm out today it was probably 80 degrees out luckily we're kind of kind of half in the shade half in the sun so we didn't have to really rush to get this stamp plus it's fairly small so we're gonna get these stamps just laid out start tamping them in We've got our texture roller there we always use our texture roller around the edges around the columns for any touching up that we need to do that thing comes in pretty handy this is an ashler slate pattern too this is probably one of the more popular patterns that we do You gotta make sure that dog didn't walk on it. He wanted to get on there real quick. Um, and then, you know, this these stamps we get from Butterfield. They're pretty good sized stamps. There are some other companies that make these Ashler stamps, but the stamps are a little bit smaller than this. We like these larger ones. They cover quite a bit of area. And, you know, you can see there's two people on here right now walking around. The bigger these stamps are, the more room you have to walk without bumping into each other. we work our way across from one side to the other we're going to get rid of now that we got this uh the, our spray on there we're going to get that poly off there and get that out of the way so the wind doesn't blow it off later it's a little bit you know having those three walls in in the columns to deal with really kind of slows the whole process down versus if you're just doing an outside patio having to wrap or roll the stamp up the wall and then when you roll it up the wall like Luke's doing right now the pattern a lot of times doesn't doesn't get all the way right up against the wall because you're rolling it up there so you know we texture roller it with the roller and then if there's any grout lines or anything like that they don't they don't go all the way to the wall they might be a couple inches short so you gotta you gotta cut all them in by hand with your with your hand tool so that really slows things down quite a bit. So when you're doing something like this, you know, something even something small like this, you got to make sure you have enough time to get from one end to the other. And, you know, don't let it deceive you that hey, this is pretty small. This isn't going to take very long when you know, in all actuality from start when we first laid that stamp to when we pulled the last stamp off, it was probably probably 20 or 30 minutes, you know, of time it took us to get across this thing. We keep going back and touching up little things, lines we want to make look better, surface texture we want to make look better, and it's just it's just part of being number one professionals and being detailed and being just real fussy about how things come out. You know, people they pay a lot of money for something like this. They want it to come out looking really really good. So, you know, if you're if you're stamping for somebody, you know, you're charging somebody to do this. You want to make sure you do your very best, make sure it comes out as good as you can possibly make it look with your experience with your skill and then if you're trying this on your own you know you might want to not only watch these videos but I also I got a stamp concrete course down in the uh, description below it probably worth your while to take that too for what I charge is very very cheap to learn you know all the little details all the little tricks that we do I walk you through things. I, I I talk about it in a little more detail. So if you're thinking of trying this on your own, I would definitely recommend taking that course. Just getting that last one <clears throat> tamped in, make sure I got really good impression in there. And then once I pull it off, if I think I need to turn something up, I'll just take that texture roller and just roll it make sure the texture on the surface of those you know stones look really really good all right so that's all stamped the liquid release with the color in it slowly evaporating so we'll be back tomorrow wash it clean it give it two or three days and we'll come back and seal it Now, if you're wondering why we're sawing this, it's just to help control shrinkage cracks. You know, concrete tends to want to crack just on its own. 
So we're cutting a joint, a nice straight joint in there, and, and we're trying to make it crack in that joint instead of just cracking somewhere randomly. And yes, I mean, we probably could have taken a chance. This is pretty small and not sawed this, but why? I mean, as, as far as doing doing uh, business for a customer, you don't want to take really take that chance and have it crack. You can't really come back and make the crack disappear afterwards. So putting a couple saw joints in that doesn't really show. Um, I mean, yes, you, you can see the saw joint there, but it's just it's part of the deal with stamp concrete. You got to be able to deal with that. Here's the view of the the house we're working at. It was on a really nice lake. I just thought I'd give you a quick shot of that. Really nice day today. There's no wind at all. And it's it's a really nice looking place too. It's three different levels on a nice spot here in Maine. A lot of lakes in Maine. A lot, a lot of lakes. So there's a lot of lake frontage. A lot of houses, a lot of camps on lakes. So Danner and I came back here the next day and we're just washing the the residue of that liquid release off, you know, cleaning all that off, getting it ready to seal. And when we when we do seal it, it's going to tend to look really close to what when we're done here, you'll see about the same sheen and about the same darkness as it looks like here when the water's on it. So it's, you can kind of get a really good idea of what it looks like just by wetting the surface. But basically, we'll just use a little Dawn dish detergent in some water, dump it right on there, and just lightly scrub it with a broom like this. And that's going to remove any excess liquid release that got on there. And that liquid release does leave a little bit of a residue, so you just don't want to seal right over that. You always want to remove that, otherwise your sealer's not going to bond very good. So let me know down in the comments, guys. You like this type of stamp pattern? Would you try to do something like this on your own? Have you ever done stamping before? Let me know down in the comments. All right, that's it for today. Wash, sawed, all cleaned up. We're gonna let that dry up for a day or two, and we'll come back and seal it. Looks pretty good. <laughs> 